We are nowadays building systems that none of us will understand. Yet we have to make it better and improve on it. Um, so we have to cut it down into pieces that we can understand and make them interact in a way that we still sort of oversee. And CQRS is a very nice way to split your complexity, the complexity of your application into different parts. Right? You, you cut it down to small pieces that hopefully even a human can understand. Right? But what I noticed when implementing something like CQRS, you might have had something in mind, something really beautiful that you want to, uh, you want to build. But the problem is there's all these little frameworks and libraries, and basically it's up to you to put everything together. The problem is, you only really care about a few of those things. In this mess, you probably won't even notice that the stuff that you got all the parts for will not really help you build the thing that you had in mind. You always end up in a different place than the one you originally had when you drew those first boxes and arrows on a whiteboard. People started discovering that the, the way Axon allows you to build software is very useful when building microservices systems. And of course, microservices, they promise a lot of, uh, um, a lot of agility and scalability of your, uh, of your systems, but it's very, hard to build a or it's very easy to build a microservices environment that doesn't deliver on those advantages. Right? It's very easy to mess up. The problem is microservices are really hard. We are back to that situation where we want to have a car and we have all the parts, all the individual parts. All the parts are made, but we still have to combine them together to make sure we have something usable. And it's not only the technology that is really hard and making sure that we have our circuit breakers and our service discovery and everything in place, but it's also where do we split? What's in one microservice versus what's in the other? Now, we, we would like you to build monoliths instead. Don't start with microservices. What's wrong with a good old monolith? Right? They're easy to deploy. They're much easier to refactor. Right? The only problem is they're somewhat harder to scale and maybe move around. Is, uh... And there's a big difference. We should not confuse the monolith with a big ball of mud. A monolith still has structure. We can still break it down if we want to without wearing gloves to protect us. What we propose is go for that monolith, but make sure there's some clearly defined structure inside. And the thing Axon does to help you is provide you the, the messaging concepts, the commands, the events, and the queries that these components need to interact with each other. And as time progresses, we can extract more components and scale them as we, as we please. The thing that helps us achieve that is what we call location transparency. And if people ask us now, what is the primary feature of Axon Framework? It's not CQRS. It's not the fact that you can build domain models. It's the fact that it gives you location transparency between the components inside of your application. Location transparency is what allows you to extract these components. Because if two components are not aware of their respective location, it means you can change that location. You just send a message, and that message will find its destination. So as I said, Axon Framework is the thing that sits in the middle, allows you to build a structured monolith, making sure that all these components are nicely separated, and that gives you the promise of being able to extract the components. But now we have a little bridge to gap. Right? And in that bridge, we need some messaging system. And probably, if we're using events that retain value, we need some storage. We had Axon Framework open source. We had Axon Hub and DB Commercial. And as of today, I can announce that uh, these products have been merged. So we call it Axon Server. It's the server component that gives you the, the server-side features of what Axon Framework would need to scale. What we have decided to do is to open source Axon Server as well. The open source version is usable in a production environment. And we also noticed that the current offerings of having multiple editions was rather complex. So we want to have a structure that is slightly simpler, where we have a few packs that you can pick and choose. They can provide 
additional features that you can use in specific situations. And this is the, going to be the default in, in Axon 4. Um, Axon 4 is much more about giving you the actual scalability, not just the ability to scale, but also making it a lot easier to actually do so. Thanks very much, and uh, let us know what you think. It doesn't get any easier than that.